Today we'll upgrade our chat app server with the Express Framework. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we will add Express to our chat application, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Our starter code is the completed code from lesson two in the video series, and today's video is lesson three, so if you haven't watched the beginning lessons one and two, I recommend starting there. There's a link to the playlist and a link to all of the code resources in the description. Now the goal of today's lesson is to upgrade our Node.js server with the Express library. So we want to do that by opening a terminal window and then we need to CD into the server directory. You can see that's where I'm at, but if you haven't done that, for example, if I were to go back up one directory, now you can see I'm in the lesson three directory like we see over here for lesson three, then I would need to CD into that server directory and that's where our package JSON is. So now that I'm here, I want to say npm i and then express to install express as a dependency for this project. Once that's installed, we can close the terminal and you should see Express listed along with socket IO here in your dependencies. Now I'm going to change the name from lesson two to lesson three. Now that we're moving on to a new lesson, you can name your project whatever you want to. And now we're ready to look at our server code in the index.js file. We don't need the create server import from HTTP any longer. So let's go ahead and remove that. And instead I'm going to import, and I want lowercase here, import express from express. After that, I'm going to define a constant for the port, which is just a good habit to do. So I'm going to say const port, I'm going to set that equal to the process, once again, lowercase, process.env.port, or if that's not defined in the env file, I'm just going to set it to 3500, and that's what we'll use today. Now from there, I can replace this line with the HTTP server. So let's go ahead and highlight that because we're no longer using create server. Instead, I'm going to say const, and I need lowercase, say app equals, and then express, and just call express. So now we'll refer to our server as app. That will be our express server essentially. And then after that, I'm going to say, well, let's go ahead and have it listen first. And then I want to get a value from that. So let's go ahead and call this express server. And we'll set this equal to app.listen. Now, if that sounds familiar, remember we had HTTP server.listen down here, and this will be very similar. So I'm just going to delete that one because we will no longer need it but I'll have this up here above everything that I'm doing with the socket IO server below. So express server is going to be app.listen. And then inside of that, we can pass in that port value that we set above, and then we can have an anonymous function. And inside of this function, we can essentially do what we were before, which is console.log. And now I can say listening, but I'm going to use a template literal so I can insert the port value here and that will just say port. And that way, if we ever decided to change the port with an environment variable there, we could do that. So now when we create this new socket IO server below, we just need to pass in the express server. So we can do that right here, just replace the HTTP server. Now I'd like to talk about cores briefly because we're going to do something with the express server that we were not doing before. And that is hosting the front end application with Express on the server as well. So that means we will no longer need the local host 5500, but we could leave it there. Or if you decide you want to keep that separation of concerns, you could host your front end app elsewhere. And if you do that, then you need to put in the address of wherever you're hosting that app. If it has a different domain, that would be a cross origin request. But when we host the front end application on the same server, it would no longer be a cross origin request for any of those resources. And that's what this is, is cross origin resource sharing. That's what CORE stands for. So we won't need to address that any further here. However, once again, if you have a different domain for the front end application, if you were to keep this separate, then not just in, well, if it is in production, instead of false, you would want that other domain. Here for development, where we were just using live server in the previous lessons, 
we launched the application on localhost 5500 and we needed to list that in cores as well because it was not on the same server as the back end, our code here, but now it will be when we apply that. Now, in order to host our front end application with Express, we need to st set up a static server. And I also cover this in my Node.js course. So if you haven't watched that or you're not familiar, I dive deeper in that course. You may want to check that out as well. Now here at the top, we need another import. We're going to say import path, and that's going to come from path. And that's a Node.js module for path. And then we can use that as we set up our static folder. And we do that with middleware. We'll do that after we define app. We can say app.use. Now here we're going to say express.static. Then inside of here, we'll say path.join. And then we pass in something that we can use with Node.js. And there's going to be a problem, but I want to show the problem first. So we'll do two underscores, dir name. That should give us the directory name. It should know what that is, but I'll discuss the problem in just a second. And we're going to name our folder for our static assets public that will be on the server. So this defines our static folder. So when we get a request just to the root domain, the slash, essentially it will send everything to the public directory that will contain those static assets. Now we're going to have a problem here though, because we're using import instead of require. We're not using common JS, the default in Node.js. And as I'd mentioned in the previous tutorial, I had requests to not use require to go ahead and use import. And then in the package JSON, we had to set type to module. So now we're using modules. The problem is this directory name value is not available in modules. So now we have an issue that we wouldn't have had if we'd used require. Now there's nothing wrong with either way. We just have to apply the fix essentially to get around this because we need the value of directory name here to set up these static assets. And now if you wanna see this error, you could go ahead and create the public folder over here and try to run the server and then request, of course, something from that directory. You might not even need to make that request to see the error. And the error would say the dir name is not defined in the ES module scope. That's essentially saying that this value is not available inside of a module, which is what we are now using. So let's go ahead and apply the fix. We need to do a couple more imports here at the top, or at least one more, and then a couple more values. So I'll say import curly brace, file URL to path from URL. And once we have done that, we need to define a couple things. So I'm going to say const, then two underscores, file name, and I'm going to set that equal to file URL to path, and I'm going to then put inside the operators import.meta.url. After that, let's go ahead and set the value for directory name. So now we need two underscores, dir name, and we'll set this equal to path.dir name, and then we pass in the file name that we previously defined. So now this will have the value we expect. So we just had to work around that. One more import, and then set up these values that we expect Node to already have for us, but it would not provide them inside of a module since we're using type module and using these ES6 import styles instead of the common JS require. And now with that set up, let's save the file and let's go ahead and create a directory over here inside the server directory. We need to call this public. And now that I created that, it looks like, is it in the server directory? No, it's not. Let me drag it in there. So that's where it needs to be on the same level with your node modules directory inside of the server directory. Now inside of public, we want the same files that we had up here inside of the app directory. So we can just grab those. I'll click on one, hold down shift, and now we should have all three and I'm going to drag them in to the public directory. Now I can just click on the app directory and delete it. Now with everything in place, we should once again be able to open a terminal with control in the back tick then type npm run dev and it should start the server and it should be running on port 3500. Now the difference that we have is that the front end and the back end are both running now on the same server. So everything is running and you can see I have two users connected. So it looks like I've got two browser windows open connecting to port 3500 already. Let me pull those up for you. Okay, here's both browser windows. Let me type a message into the first one. Just put hello. 
And we can see we have a user that said hello and it appeared in the second window as well. So we'll type hi to send that back. And our second user says hi. So everything is now working on the same server using Express. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to set up activity detection. So when this user types, the other user will be able to see it and vice versa. And you've probably seen that before. It says someone is typing or someone is sending you a message. And then of course you get the message after that, or maybe you don't. We'll check all of that out in the next one. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day. Let's write more code together very soon.